the showreel. I'm Matt Clayton. And I'm Andrew Cowderoy. On this week's episode, we'll discuss the 48-hour film project, including a special screening of the showreel team's practice film. We have, the th we have the news, as usual, and we'll review the new Steve Jobs biopic, Jobs. Due to budget cuts, we couldn't afford a guest today, and our budget was zero to begin with, so we had to sell some of our furniture to afford our volunteer crew. So instead of a guest, I've been out talking to the fine people of Brisbane. In the upcoming Batman vs Superman film, Henry Cavill will be back as Superman, and Ben Affleck has been cast as Batman. This has been a controversial move amongst fans, but why? I took to the streets to find out. So I'm here at the West End Market, so I'm going to ask people some questions, and they're hopefully going to answer me. I'm going to ask them about Batman, mostly. Let's see if these people know about Batman. Do you know anything about Batman? Yes. Vaguely. No. No, um, I haven't spent a lot of time thinking about it, to be honest. Um, yeah, nah. <laughs> well, that answers nothing. Actually, I did get better answers than that. Um, so have you heard about Ben Affleck being cast as the next Batman? I have heard about that. And what do you think about that? Well, I think he's a great actor, so I think he might do well in it. I haven't heard that. I, I didn't know that. Ben Affleck. What an interesting character for Batman, yeah. <laughs> No, I haven't, but I have. I'm not happy about it now. Do you think he would make a good Batman? I don't know. I mean, Pearl Harbor was a bit of a shocker, but he's done some good things since then. Oh, I think he would um, be great. I think he'd um, any character he took on, I think he'd do a good job, yeah. Well, I don't think he's the best choice for Batman. Who do you think would be the best choice? I reckon bring back Michael Keaton. <laughs> Is he your favourite Batman? I think so, yeah. He added that little bit of humour to it. Who's, who's been your favourite Batman? Um, I mean, well, it's a tough question, isn't it? I mean, what's your favourite Radiohead song, really? Who was the last Batman in The Dark Knight? Christian Bale. <laughs> that, that guy, yeah, I like him, he's hot. <laughs> so he, he should just come back and stay as Batman forever? Yeah, he should be Batman forever. Probably one of the earlier guys, sure, yeah. What's your favourite Radiohead song? Talk show host. <laughs> So who do you think would win in a fight, Batman or Superman? I think Superman would win. Superman? I'd say Superman. Oh, definitely Superman. And why's that? Well, I think um, when it comes down to it, he's quicker. Yeah? Yeah, I think Superman is quicker than Batman is. Well, I don't know, like, Superman's weakness is like a rock. Superman's um, got greater powers. Uh, after watching the last Superman movie, um, I can't see how Batman could possibly last very long. He supposedly can't die, so like, yeah. even though he has died a couple of times, <laughs> DC just keeps bringing him back. And his uh, ability just to fly off is, um, without the use of a vehicle gives him the upper hand, I think, yeah. Whereas Batman's like technology, so he's not actually super, like, he just uses gadgets and stuff. So I'd have to say Superman would win. Yeah, I don't know, Superman is the Man of Steel, Batman's immortal, right? Well, what happens if Batman gets some kryptonite? Well, then, uh, yeah, it balances the scales, doesn't it? Yeah, it should be an interesting movie, though. So, what do you think about Ben Affleck as Batman? You see, I don't really mind it that much. I think... I, I think I have to be the only person ever, as the least harsh film critic in the world, I think I have to be the only person ever who actually didn't mind Daredevil. <laughs> um, but Argo was, like, no one can say Argo was bad. It was fantastic. So he's done some pretty cool stuff in the past. So. Well, I'm not sure if he's going to be fantastic. I'm sure he's going to make the role his own. And that's what's really important with superheroes, I think. Yeah, I don't think... He's not the greatest actor in the world, but he's not, he's not terrible, is yeah. he? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I saw Daredevil when I was a kid. And, I mean, it was all right at the time. Um, to be fair, I haven't watched it since I was about 10. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he... I, I mean, he was good in Argo, yeah. But, I mean, if you look at the other actors who've played um, Batman, none of them, other than maybe Christian Bale, none of them have really been excellent actors so they it's not really a kind of role that needs a brilliant actor to do mm. you just have to be able to do a deep voice and yeah go, where's it's like, rachel it's like ben affleck might not be as good as christian bale but all the he's going to be on par if not better than i think every other batman so it's like how bad can you get yeah, yeah. well what about 
We, I mean, we've d discussed this question before on Showreel but with uh, Nick and Courtney. Yeah. And I think uh, you and Brooke were there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, who would win in a fight, Batman or Superman? It's a really hard one because I just don't know. Because Superman is so clever. Um, Batman, I'm sorry. Batman is so clever that I think it's. It would. I'm sure he'd be able to get him to get in contact with um, Kryptonite, Kryptonite somehow. But... Batman is Batman. It's like it's like it's like um, an immovable object versus an unstoppable force. It's just going to yeah. cause a nuclear explosion. <laughs> well, not a nuclear. I don't know. That's explosion. what happens in physics, but yeah, <laughs> an explosion of some kind. Yeah, I mean, I think Superman will win. I mean, well, at the end of the film, they're clearly going to team up and take down Lex Luthor or something. Will happen. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. take down Brian Cranston. <laughs> yeah, who should be awesome. He, he will be. Yeah. Well, I also asked people of Brisbane about their favorite films and TV shows. I mean, what's your favourite film? Of all time? Yeah. Sea of Love? No. I just like the Friday the 13th. Big Lebowski? Um, God, like Encino Man? From like the 90s? I've never heard of that. What? <laughs> oh, Shawshank Redemption. Avatar. Probably he died with a falafel in his hand. With Noah Wilson. It's kind of an odd art house flick, but I don't know why. I just kind of like it, yeah. <laughs> And what's your favourite TV show? TV show? I love The Walking Dead. It's my life. Maybe Skins. But my favourite TV show would have to be MASH. Doctor Who. Awesome. Uh, probably Peep Show. Offspring. The Gruen Transfer. We did a poll of the Showreel volunteers to find out Showreel's favourite film. Uh, we did the poll over Facebook, so obviously there were a few problems with the results, but uh, essentially, everyone who answered had different favourites, except for uh, the two people who voted for Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Yeah, one of those was me. So yes, that is the, the best film ever. My favourite film, uh, I think it was Inception, but I've changed it. I'm pretty sure it's Blades of Glory. <laughs> Very different films. Yeah. <laughs> Other favourites were One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, The Basketball Diaries, Brazil, Twelve Monkeys, Matilda, Life of Pi and Hot Fuzz. In a poll to find out Showreel's favourite TV show, we asked volunteers to pick their three favourites. One person only picked one, but Elliot won uh, the t with the top score of picking seven. Uh, so, our top favourite TV show is, unsurprisingly, Doctor Who. Obviously. Yeah. Uh, the other top shows are in between as NCIS, Black Books, and The Simpsons. Simpsons is awesome. It's just... <laughs> How can a show go for that long and without being so brilliant? It's like, it yeah. has its down points, but it yeah. also has its major up it is. points. Yeah. It's, it's the best cartoon. Yeah. Well, we have to take a break, but we'll be back soon for more Showreel. Don't go away. Oh, hi, audience. Welcome back to Showreel. I'm definitely Andrew Cowderoy, and this is the news. Ridley Scott has confirmed that he will be at the helm of the sequel to his 30-year-old sci-fi classic Blade Runner. The veteran English director was spotted in the Canary Islands off the coast of Morocco, location scouting for the film. Scott is working with Hampton Francher, screenwriter for the original film, and has stated that the movie uh, will be set some five years in the future after the original, and will feature a female protagonist. Most thinking is that it will be the more than human, more human than human, Rachel, the Nexus 6 uh, replicant and Tyrell, Tyrell's plaything, played by C uh, Sean Young in the 1982 film. Mick Jagger is co-producing a biography of soul legend James Brown. Chadwick Boseman, soon to be seen on screen here as baseball legend Jackie Robertson in the film 42, is set to play the hardest working man in show business. Producer Brian Grazer, along with Jagger, has been seen trying to get the project off the ground for more than 10 years and has finally had it green lit, lit when director Tate Taylor of the, of the Help fame came on board. We should be ready to get on up later in the year. James Spader has signed on to be the voice, if not the body, of Ultron in Joss Whedon's sequel to The Avengers. With speculation rife to how the evil robot comes into being, with Tony Stark or even S.H.I.E.L.D. being mentioned as possible sources of some kind of good robot gone bad, it'll be interesting to see what the former Brat Packer makes of the role 
after his recent thoughtful television performance in what has been a steady climb back to the top after a, uh, for the 54-year-old. It's not often that the terms Oscar and Matthew McConaughey are mentioned in the same sentence, but the former rom-com star could get a nod uh, for his stand-up performance in Dallas Buyers Club. In the famously stalled project, McConaughey plays a full-blown AIDS-stricken homophobic racist cowboy who starts a drug import business of the latest antivirals from Mexico with the help of a transsexual prostitute played by the unrecognisable Jared Leto. The Based on True Events feature should be here by October. And in news that has not yet happened, Guillermo del Toro, director of Pan's Labyrinth, has died after an altercation concerning the pronunciation of his name. His last words are unpronounceable. And that's the news. <laughs> Welcome back from the news, I'm still Matt Clayton. From Friday the 13th to Sunday the 15th of September, a team from Showreel will be participating in the Brisbane 48 Hour Film Project. After being given a genre, line of dialogue, character and prop, we have to write, shoot, edit, render and submit a 4-7 to seven minute short film within 48 hours. I'm producing and one of the next presenters, Jacob Paint, is directing. We have current Showreel audio supervisor Dan Randall as DOP and editor and floor manager Claire Abbott's editing. As a shout out, the other members of our team, Area 31 Productions, are currently Courtney Beck, Elliot Bush, Jan Halsvik, Richard McDonald Miller Drennan, Reese Marshall, Harley USB Mentorplay, Rob Nabilia, Lauren Peacock, James Potts, John Ryan, and Richard Toaster. Andrew is not participating, but you've done it before, haven't you? Yeah, I did do it last year, um, and it was really interesting. I think it's a really, it's one of those kind of things. It's, even though it's, I think it's something that everybody that has anything to film, anything to do with film has to do at least once. Um, my advice is hopefully you get an easy subject. Um, don't panic, <laughs> and don't have one person trying to do the whole thing, because that's never good, but especially when you don't have this much time, you need to share the workload. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. So, on the Sunday, the 18th of August, we had a practice run. We gave ourselves 10 hours to make a three-minute film. With much less time than the actual event, the result obviously wasn't perfect, but I'm proud of our effort. Here's what the people of Brisbane had to say when I asked them if they'd seen the film. No. No. No, I haven't. But I have. I'm not happy about it now. No, I haven't. Hopefully it'll be better than Daredevil. No, um... Yeah, nah. <laughs> I saw the trailers, and that was enough for me. <laughs> We're going to show the film now. Uh, we've made some minor fixes in post since the day, but if you want to see the original cut or this improved version, you can find them on the Area 31 Productions YouTube channel, which should appear in the bottom third of the screen, Claire. Have fun, Joe. You better be careful in Australia, though. You know they're all cops. Where's my wallet? Huh? My wallet was in my pocket and now it's not. You bumped into me. Is that it over there?
filth. The whole story. I know, it's a good story, right? 200 Australian dollars he paid. I'll be gone before he gets back. We'll be back for the final segment when we review the new film, Jobs. Stay classy, Brisbane. Hello, howdy Krishna. I'm George Hatterson. Welcome back to Showreel. This week, Andrew and I are reviewing the film, Jobs. Let's take a look at the trailer. Steve, it takes guts to drop out like you did. Higher education it comes at the expense of experience. Boss! What are you working on? It's a computer terminal that holds up to the TV from the display. Uh, Steve? Wow. These are state of the art. Nobody's making anything like this. All right. Welcome to Apple Computer. Is this everything? Startup. I think we should start with around 90 grand. Uh, could you repeat that? If you'll have me aboard. Trust me, on my I N D E P E N D E N T. Apple Incorporated went public this morning. Chasing dreams since I was 14. Y'all can't stop me. We gotta make the small things unforgettable. Typeface it isn't a pressing issue. Get out. He's trying to start a war with IBM. Steve's been doing the impossible ever since it was in a garage. I'm trying to build an apple, and they're taking it away from me? If you keep heading down this path, I will not protect you. It's a blatant ripoff. I'm gonna sue you for every cent! You are your own worst enemy. The board is unanimous. Steve will no longer be involved in this company. Ten years after Steve Jobs' departure, the future of Apple Computer is in jeopardy. In life, you only get to do so many things. We're gonna make Apple cool again. Here's to the crazy ones. The misfits. The rebels. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Jobs, directed by Joshua Michael Stern and written by Matt Whiteley, is an American biographical drama about Apple founder Steve Jobs, played surprisingly well by Ashton Kutcher. It begins with Steve Jobs launching the iPod, here seen as the pinnacle of human creation. It then goes back to where it all began. Steve has dropped out of college, where he still hangs around attending classes and sleeping with a girl. He then takes acid for an unnecessarily long montage. Eventually, he decides to get into the computer business when he sees his friend Steve Wozniak's invention, the Apple One. They name their new business Apple, stealing the name of the Beatles record company. Overcoming obstacles uh, by being a maverick businessman, Steve Jobs builds Apple into a successful company with a little help from his friends. Concerned that he cares too much about minor details, Jobs has many altercations with the board and he is eventually fired. But of course, Apple needs him, and they welcome him back with open arms. The film takes itself way too seriously, and computer design is shown as being far more important than it really is. Steve Jobs is portrayed as if he is some sort of god. When he talks, people stand in silence to listen intently to his every word, and they applaud everything he does. The film obviously takes a lot of liberties with the truth for the sake of drama. While not entirely unenjoyable, overall I found the film a bit boring. It's far too long, but perhaps people who like Steve Jobs will like it. I'm giving it two out of five stars. What did you think, Andrew? Well, I agree with your final conclusion on the film. I disagree with almost everything else you said. Uh, it's very clear this film is trying to replicate Aaron Sorkin's 2010 movie, The Social Network. I loved The Social Network. 
it wasn't as much of a bi as a biographical film than it was a film based on true events. Uh, the problem Jobs had, I feel, is that it was trying to be a biographical film without getting any details correct. As Matt said, the film tells the story of Steve, Steve Jobs from the conception of Apple to his reinstatement as the CEO and the launch of the iPod in 2001. This film has been getting a huge amount of criticism uh, for being wildly inaccurate from people who are familiar with the real story, including Apple's co-founder uh, Steve Wozniak himself. I feel when you take out the historical inaccuracies, the truth you get from the film uh, is the character of Steve Jobs himself. The way Jobs is represented in the film is, not, uh, is certainly not flattering at times, but it shows from what is publicly known anyway, the eccentric and slightly crazy enigma that is Jobs. As Matt said, uh, there is a running idea in this film about the importance of physical computer design. Uh, I don't think the creators of the film were trying to say computer design is insanely important, but I think what they were trying to say is how important Jobs thought it was. After all, the film is called Jobs, not Apple. For, an Apple, fa for Apple fans like myself, not only will the film's historical inaccuracy annoy, but, but it won't tell you anything new about the character of Jobs. I feel, uh, I feel if this was a historical story about the rise, downfall and reinstatement of a tech company's tyrannical dictator, it could be interesting. The social network surprised many because it wasn't just for techno geeks. This surprised me because it definitely wasn't for techno geeks. I feel right my review today has been a bit confusing, but the film was also. If you're bored, sure, go see the film. The second half is definitely more entertaining than the first, uh, but none of the film is traditionally entertaining Hollywood style. I give it three stars out of five. So you're an Apple fan, you say? I am. I wouldn't call myself a fanboy because I do... I, I take things in, in, well, in moderation. I just think personally for me, a lot of, I, I just happen to own a lot of Apple stuff just because it happens to be my favorite. But I, I also don't like a lot of Apple stuff. And the thing is, I came into this movie knowing a lot about the subjects, a lot about uh, the way, the whole, like the, what, the story already. And the historical inaccuracies really annoyed me. Um, but for somebody who ha doesn't know all these things, I think it would have been a very different reaction is the thing. Yeah, well, I, I didn't actually know really anything about Steve Jobs. I'm not an Apple fan. I like, I like iPods, but that's about it. I prefer PCs. Mm. Um, so I know I'm not a fan of Steve Jobs. I thought if I was, maybe I would like it more because I mean, I like documentaries and films mm. about the Beatles because I'm a fan. And I thought maybe I just didn't like this because I didn't like the subject matter. But you yeah, seem to think that I, I don't it. think that's not, I, I, I think it doesn't make a difference personally. The, the thing I have is I was thinking, a film like The Social Network works really well because it's a Hollywood film, a traditional Hollywood film, loosely based off the story of yeah, Facebook. Very like it was marketed originally as a biopic about Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg, yeah. but it isn't, and everyone realized that. It's just real, a really great story that they kind of plucked from reality. Yeah. And I feel what this is, is they've tried to make a biopic, but then most biopics make no money. So they've tried to make it make money by also making it a Hollywood thing and yeah. combine the two. And that really just didn't work. Yeah, and I, mean, I think they definitely got Ashton Kutcher to give it that kind of star yeah. power. But I, I thought, when I saw the trailer, I thought he'd be terrible. I thought he's nothing like he Steve Jobs. Good. But he was actually good. And he didn't look exactly like him. He was obviously too fit yeah. and his face is too wide because yeah. he, he never had cancer. Yeah. But he... <laughs> well, he yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but I mean, he looks too young as well. Yeah. But apart from that, he... He did a pretty good job. I mean, I thought his walking was a little forced yeah. sometimes. We kind of slumped over a lot. I was but. surprised when they made him like old man jobs to introduce Actually, the that iPod. Good. That was like surprisingly good. really, really good. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting film just because I'm not really sure how to think of it. Mm. I think it did need a bit of a trim time wise. It was probably a bit too long. And the second half was definitely more entertaining. And there were a huge amount of things left out. If you want the true story of Apple, you should go read that Steve Jobs um, novel that uh, I can't remember the writer, but it's the only like official yeah. Steve Jobs. Or just read Wikipedia. Oh, Wikipedia, yeah. yeah. Well, that's all we have time for today. For all the latest showreel news and birthdays of celebrities, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter, and you can watch past episodes on YouTube. 
Don't forget to listen to our free podcast on iTunes. Well, it's time for outro or duck. How will we end the episode? Will it be an outro or a duck? It's a duck! Andrew, can you feel that? It's time for us to regenerate into new hosts. I don't want to go. Damn, still not ginger. I'm a girl. Shut up. Oh, that was rude. Rude and not ginger. Well, join Mark and me, Jacob, next week for another episode of Showreel. We'll see you then.